Okay, guys, it's been a quiet weekend. We haven't had any Habs hockey to watch. We're all probably going a little insane here, myself included. So I figured, hey, why not talk about some trades? Everybody loves trades. So here's my plans for today. I'm going to list out four players that I think could get dealt by the trade deadline. I think these guys are some of Montreal's best trade pieces right now. And... I think teams would definitely be interested in each of these guys. So, let's see whose name is on the list. But first, before we begin, if you're a fan of the Habs, or just watching Ben Sherratt take a bunch of minor penalties, then please consider subscribing to my channel, as I upload a ton of hockey content and would really enjoy having some more you grasshoppers tag along for the ride. Now, first up on the list here... Coming in at number four, we got the Kool-Aid man, Brett Kulak. This guy is still just 27 years old. He feels like he's a veteran. He's making a reasonable 1.85 million bucks. And he's been a steady, reliable defenseman since joining Montreal. He does as he's told. He keeps his mouth shut. You can sit him out or you can play him 20 minutes a game. Whatever you want to do. He's not the kind of guy that's going to complain to the media or anything like that. He just seems happy. He wants to be part of the team. He's a good sport. And I'd even go as far as saying the guy is kind of underrated here in Montreal. And for the teams that are planning on going into the Stanley Cup playoffs this year and making a splash, if you're looking for some depth on defense, a guy with a cheap contract that's right about to expire after the playoffs, then Britt Kulak is the guy for the job. All right? Geez, sounds like I'm trying to sell a car or something. Moving on now, coming in at number three, we got our turkey licking him. Since breaking into the league and putting up 18 goals in his rookie season, Lekkonen has been unable to pot as many goals since. But the guy has been a serviceable third and fourth liner. He plays a wicked defensive game. He's great at killing penalties. Every once in a while, he decides to score a big goal. It's pretty awesome. And you know what? He's actually been one of Montreal's most consistent forwards this year. Ain't that something? And again, for a team making a push for the Stanley Cup this year, another beautiful thing about our little turkey is his contract. It's about to expire right after the season, making him an RFA yet again. And for a respectable $2.3 million cap hit, teams are going to be interested. They're going to be taking a flyer on our turkey. I can smell it. I remember a couple of years ago on Hockey Night in Canada, Brian Burke said Lickinen was underrated and the kind of player that you need on your team. So there you go. Burke's got a crush on him. Lickinen is on his way to Pittsburgh. Put it in the bank. Boom. Now, unlike the first couple of guys we spoke about here, the next Hab player that we're going to talk about has an existing contract, which makes things a little more tricky. But... Coming in at number two, we got my man, Tyler Toffoli, Ravioli. And this guy may just have one of the best contracts on Montreal's team right now. He's making 4.25 million bucks until 2024. And when you take a look at his statistics, the guy is worth every freaking penny. He scored 28 goals last year for Montreal in just 52 games. He's got a ton of experience at 29 years old. He's already won a cup with the Kings and was a huge factor in Montreal's playoff run last year, as we all know. I mean, honestly, what's not to like about Ravioli? This is a guy that I can honestly say I'm going to miss if he's gone. And he's only been there for a limited amount of time. But as of right now, Toffoli is actually injured. But if he can get back and get healthy right before the trade deadline, you know, maybe score a couple of hat tricks against Vancouver or something like that, this guy could very well be eye candy at the trade deadline. Here we go, coming in at number one, and you know exactly who I'm going to say. We've got Ben Sherratt. What you not to like about Ben Sherratt? Let me tell you something. There's a lot of buzz going on so far this year about Sherratt possibly getting dealt by the trade deadline. Everybody seems to think Sherratt is going to fetch a first-round draft pick. And I've got to admit, the only thing better than having one first-round draft pick heading into this year's draft is multiple first-round draft picks. How does that sound, huh? Bring him on. Big Ben is another guy in the last year of his contract. He's making 3.5 million bucks. He's a rock of a defenseman back there that can play some big minutes in the playoffs. 
He's just an animal. And playoff hockey, that's his style. I mean, you wouldn't even be able to get close to Carey Price to wish him Merry Christmas with this guy on the ice without him giving you a black eye. Sherratt is as rough as a cow's tongue. And to be quite honest, if I was to pick one player on Montreal's team right now that looks like a captain, acts like a captain, and carries himself like a captain, (laughs) God, I can't believe I'm about to say this, but it's Ben Sherratt. Doesn't that just sound insane? The guy seems like a leader to me. Taking a look at his stats here, he's got five goals already this season. He's been really stepping up his game so far, you know, with all the injuries the team has. And honestly, I think there's going to be a lot of interest in Ben Sherratt. He's going to be gone. I just know it. The guy is a beast. Maybe I'm overrating him, but somebody is going to pay up. You just, you just know it. Anyway, guys, there you have it. There's four Montreal Canadian players that I think could get some interest from other teams over the next couple of months. I know a lot of guys would like to add players like Gallagher and even Carey Price to that list. But those guys are the ones that I think are going to be a little more difficult to move right now. Maybe I'm wrong and Jeff Gordon just goes ballistic and manages to get rid of these contracts during the season. Although, my spidey senses are telling me that if needed, the bigger contracts like these will be dealt with during the offseason. Leave me your thoughts in the comment section. As always, do you think any of the players I mentioned are going to get moved? Or do you think all these guys are actually safe? And maybe you got some other head players on your mind that you think are going to get moved. And hey, I'll see you next time.